What's up guys, it's Eric from Rare Candy, and welcome back to another deck and battle here on PTCGO. And today we are kicking off our Ultra Prism coverage for PTCGO with a new Leafeon variant. So, Leafeon is a card I've been very excited about. You've probably seen me discuss it in our set review, and also we posted a Leafeon Decidueye deck a couple weeks ago as well, if you want to check that out. But this is a card I think that has a ton of potential from Ultra Prism, and I think there's a lot of different ways you could potentially build a deck around this. So today, we are taking a look at a new Leafeon variant that's going to be with the promo Lurantis. So let's take a look at it and see what makes this uh, variant so special. So this is going to be a Leafeon deck, it's our main attacker, so we're playing a 4-3 line of Leafeon GX. The reason we're playing the 4 copies of Eevee, even though we only have 3 Leafeon, is just maximize our chances of starting with Eevee, because it is definitely our preferred starter. So Leafeon GX though, 200 hit points, 2 retreat cost, fire weakness, all things you probably kind of expect from a Leafeon GX. Uh, but it has this ability, Breath of the Louise, if this is your active Pokemon, you get to heal 50 damage uh, from one of your Pokemon that has any energy attached to it. So this is just going to give us a little bit of ta extra tanking potential, especially against decks that have to two-shot us. This can, this can sometimes turn those two-hit knockouts into three-hit knockouts. So definitely a solid ability. Actually, I think one of the more underrated aspects of the card, especially since whenever you play Guzma, it basically ensures you always have a good Guzma target to promote, because whenever you play Guzma, you can force your Leafeon active, heal 50 then just retreat back into whoever that you want to attack to or of course you can always just attack with the Leafeon but that's going to be its ability its main attack though is solar beam for a grass and DCE does 110 so nothing too special you know you're going to be two-shotting most of the Pokemon in the current format uh, especially when you have a choice ban uh, you're kind of a very efficient two hit KO type of Pokemon since it only takes two energy attachments uh, so you know it's, that's decent but it's nothing amazing the real meat of Leafeon GX and why people are really so excited about is for this Grand Bloom GX attack. For just a single grass energy for each of your bench basic Pokemon, search your deck for a card that evolves from them and put it on them. So this is great because if you start with an EV, uh, attach a grass energy and use that energy evolution ability to immediately evolve into Leafeon, play Bridget, you know, fill up your bench, you can immediately use Grand Bloom and start setting up the rest of your board a lot quicker. So that's really why people are so excited about this card. So the other key component of the deck is going to be a pretty thick count of Lurantis. So we're playing a 4-4 count of Lurantis, specifically the promo one. It has that ability, Sunny Day, the attacks of your Grass and Fire Pokemon do 20 more damage to your opponent's active. So this is pretty good because if you get out a bunch of these Lurantis in play, that suddenly makes your Leafeon uh, more able to take 2-hit knockouts, or I'm sorry, 1-hit knockouts instead of 2-hit knockouts on certain Pokemon. So if you have just two of these Lorantis in play, that's going to beef up your Leafeon Solar Beam to do 150, or if you have a Choice Band, that's going to be 180, which is actually a pretty important number to hit for that's going to allow you to knock out a large amount of basic GXs and EXs, most notably Tapu Lele GX, being able to have a deck that can one-shot a Tapu Lele at some point to clean up knockouts to maybe take your last two prizes is a very, very important thing, I think, to be able to do. So the promo variant is going to enable that, but if you even get all four out with a choice band, you're hitting for, I believe it's 220. You know, to be fair, you're probably not going to get all four out at a single time, but you do have the option to, uh, you know, go really aggressive like that potentially sometimes. So the rant is going to be the other key component of the deck, like I said, just to make our Leafeons a little bit more aggressive and be able to take knockouts a little bit more efficiently. So that's the main other component of the deck, but we are also still playing one copy of Lorantis GX as well. I think definitely an underrated card uh, for this list. So we're just playing the one because Leafeon is, of course, our main attacker. But there's a couple of good things about Lorantis. First of all, 210 hit points, so it is a little bit tankier than Leafeon. It also can attack for one single energy. That is really the main reason we're playing Lorantis GX, because, for example, Leafeon takes two attachments. Uh, you know, a grass and DCE, and if you're only powered up a Leafeon gets knocked out, it's going to take at least uh, two turns before you have another attacker ready to go. But with Lorantis GX, this kind of gives you a very, very quick attacker to be able to pivot to when these types of situations happen. So it has this attack flower supply for just a single grass energy is 40 damage and you attach two basic energy from your discard to your Pokemon in any way that you like. So this is actually really good in these situations whenever your Leafeon gets knocked out. You can promote a Lorantis, uh, attack with this, and actually get that energy you just lost back out of your discard pile back into play. Flower Supply, also a really good attack to knock out basics, uh, you know, like Zeruas and Rowlets and, you know, Ralts and all of the low HP basics that have like 60-ish 
hit points because if you have a single promo Lorantis in play, your flower supply is going to do 60 damage, which is a really important number to be able to hit for. Uh, Lorantis also has another good attack, Solar Blade, for 2 Grass Energy, and the Color Roast is 120, and then you heal 30 from this Pokemon. So the damage output is pretty similar to Leafeon, but combined with the Breath of the Leaves ability and the healing from Solar Blade, you can sometimes really tank a lot of hits with this Lorantis. Uh, like I said, Flower Supply is going to be the star of the show for this card, but Solar Blade is definitely still a solid attack as well. And it is worth mentioning, Chlorosythe GX, you won't use it that often, but it is a solid GX move as well. It is 50 damage times the amount of Grass Energy attached to this Pokemon. So if you pile a bunch of Grass Energy on Lorantis, you can take big one-hit knockouts at some point. Uh, and there are certain situations, since this is an all-stage one deck, sometimes you might not even necessarily need Grand Bloom in certain games. You know, in the Decidueye variant, for example, you are going to really rely on Grand Bloom, but since everything is a stage one and pretty easy to get in play, sometimes you can actually skip Grand Bloom and maybe save your GX move for Chlorosythe at some point. But like I said, the star of the show is going to be Flower Supply. And then to round out the Pokemon line, just two copies of Tapu Lele GX for that Wonder Tag ability, searching out supporters. It's going to help us get that turn one Bridget every game. Then also we do play double Chorus Energy, so Tapu Lele GX is another, you know, a very efficient little one attachment attacker energy drive for a single DCE, 20 for each energy on both active Pokemon. So pretty streamlined Pokemon line, guys. Uh, nothing too special, just trying to go for consistency with our Pokemon line. But going on to the trainer cards, we'll start with our supporters. And this supporter line is going to look a little bit wonky at first, but right now I've actually been pretty happy with it so far. So our main draw support is actually going to be 3 Sycamore, 3N, kind of the staple draw supporters that we uh, know and love. We're not really relying on Cynthia too much. It's that new supporter, but we are still playing one copy of it. It's that new supporter. Shuffle your hand into your deck and draw six. So the reason we're not playing too many copies of this, even though it is a great new card that we got, is because this is an all stage one deck, and after you use Grand Bloom, you can usually afford to Sycamore your hands away. There's not too many moving pieces other than maybe double Carlos energies that you don't want to get rid of. So I think just generally speaking, it's safe to play Sycamore most of the time in this deck, but we're still playing the one copy of Cynthia just to give us the out, just in case we want to Lele for a different supporter. We might not want to discard our resources, but also at the same time, we don't want to refresh our opponent's hand. So I think Cynthia is fine as the one of. We're also playing one copy of Hala. This is kind of a supporter you don't see too often, but I think one that really makes sense with Leafeon variants. So you shuffle your hand into your deck, draw four cards, but if you've already used your GX attack, draw seven cards. So if there is a deck that can abuse Hala, this is definitely it. This deck is probably the fastest uh, deck I know of in the current format to use its GX move. You can use it as early as turn one if you are going second. So Hala actually is a pretty good draw supporter for a deck like this. So we're playing the one copy just because it is a good draw support, but it's not a card we want to see early on. We want to make sure that, uh, you know, for some reason, if we don't hit Bridget's on the first turn, we want to use something like an N or a Sycamore instead. So we're just playing the one, co uh, the one copy of it, and it seems to be okay. Going on, we have three copies of Guzma, of course, to choose what we want to take knockouts on, and especially since Leafeon has a great ability if it's in the active spot, the uh, side effect of Guzma forcing you to switch actually isn't that bad in this deck either. So we're playing three copies of Bridget, of course, to search out basics. And the reason we're playing such a high count of this is for a couple of reasons. First of all, Glaceon looks to be a kind of a popular card going into the early stages of this new Ultra Prism format. So relying on a heavier count of Bridget as opposed to heavier count of Tapu Lele gives us more outs against decks that get a Glaceon into play very quickly. But also, we just really want to ensure we get the turn one Bridget because honestly, Leafeon is great in the early game, but it's really not a card you want to kind of stumble around in the early couple of turns with and, you know, you know, kind of try to get a lot of Pokemon set up just with Ultra Balls. You really just have to hit Bridget, I think, for this deck to really uh, fire on all cylinders. That's why we're playing the heavy count of it. And the last supporter is one copy of the new supporter Gardenia from Ultra Prism. Kind of a card, um, you know, I don't think has too much utility outside of Leafeon variants, but uh, is a card I've been actually kind of enjoying in this list so far, but I definitely think is a flexible spot in the deck. So you heal 80 damage from one of your Pokemon that has any grass energy attached to it. So ideally, you know, if someone attacks your Leafeon, let's just say for 120, 150 damage, something in that ballpark, you can heal 50 with Leafeon's ability and then heal another 80 with Gardenia and kind of nullifying an entire attack. Like I said, if your opponent isn't taking a one-hit knockout against your Leafeons. 
and we are playing a couple of one of supporters in here but one reason i feel fine with that is because we are running one copy of pal pad as well so shuffle two supporters from your discard pile back into your deck so this is nice because it allows us to reuse some of those one ofs like cynthia Hala, and gardenia at some point also good uh just to get back things like guzmas if we have to stick them more than way early on and stuff like that so originally i had a fourth guzma in here uh just because uh, Leafeon's ability is just so good uh, but I was thinking you know what just cut the fourth Guzma for a pal pad that effectively gives you an out to the fourth Guzma and another supporter anyway so it's actually kind of a card I've been experimenting with this and Gardini are sort some of the more flexible spots in the deck so if you guys are just not a fan of pal pad and or Gardenia I think you could potentially cut these but right now it's something I'm trying out and I've been enjoying so far so a lot of other standard stuff in this deck for Ultra Ball to uh field blower we're also playing one copy of nest ball so search your deck for a basic and put it onto your bench this is just another out to getting pokemon into play on the first turn of the game that way we can use that grand bloom gx so especially if you're fortunate enough to hit nest ball and bridget in the same turn you can usually get an entirely full bench to evolve also sometimes you might miss the bridget just for some reason and you might have to play a draw supporter instead nest ball gives you an additional out to another pokemon to use grand bloom uh so seems like it made sense in the list uh, next up one copy of a rescue stretcher so of course just as a nice form of recovery here uh, even though this is a deck that relies on a lot of pokemon being in play I'm, I think the one rescue stretcher is fine just because you typically search out all of the Pokemon right away. You don't typically have to discard many with sycamores and ultra balls so I think the one rescue stretchers can be fine and we're going to get on to some more interesting cards in the list. We have one copy of Energy Lodo. So this is a card you also don't see too often. And so let's take a look at it. Look at the top seven cards of your deck. Reveal an energy you find there and put it into your hand. So we're playing six basic grass energy in this list. I originally had seven. Uh, and I just had an epiphany. You don't even really need seven energy in the deck. You just play kind of an inflated count of grass energy to ensure that you hit, uh, hit them with Leafeons. So... Like I said, over the course of a game, you'll never, or usually never, use all six or seven grass energy. So cutting the extra energy for this energy loader or professor's loader, I think, is also an option as well. But cutting it for energy loader seemed good because you can use this to sometimes dig for the grass energy if you don't already have it. But also in the mid to late game, it's great because you can dig and hit double colorless energy sometimes as well. So this is definitely a kind of a, a neat card. I think I'm I'm actually enjoying it so far. It seemed kind of gimmicky, but it's actually been. Uh, coming in quite quite some handy uh, so far so that's that also playing one copy of escape rope so each player switches their active pokemon with one of their bench your opponent switches first so we're playing three copies of floatstone in this list as well i decided to cut the fourth floatstone for escape rope just because there's sometimes where you know you can you can get like a double breath of the leaves if you have access to two switching cards in one turn because if you have let's say two Leafeons with float stones, you can only retreat one of them. So if you're playing something like Escape Rope or Switch, that allows you to uh, switch into one, and then you play the Escape Rope or Switch to go into another Leafeon and heal an additional 50. So the fourth float stone didn't seem that much valuable, like that valuable to me. I feel like the Escape Rope might just be a little better here, especially since Glaceon is going to be running around. Uh, that can sometimes help you break the Glaceon lock as well. So I think this might be better than the fourth float stone in this deck. And speaking of the float stones, like I guess I had three copies of that just to give ourselves free retreat. And three choice bands just to increase our damage output even more. And then going on to the energy, like I mentioned, six grass energy. I really don't think you need more than this. That's why things like an energy loader or a professor's letter might be more valuable than the seventh or eighth grass energy in the list. And also for DCE, just to fulfill the rest of Leafeon's attack. So you guys, that's going to be the deck. Sorry, I thought it was a little long-winded. Lots of different card explanations to go over here. But Leafeon has definitely been a card I've been having a ton of fun with. Uh, so let's head over to the battle portion of the video and we'll show you how this deck looks in action. All right, guys, so we have ourselves a game here. We're just going to call the coin flip, which we do win, so that's definitely good. So luckily with this deck, though, even if we do lose the coin flip, we still have the potential for a good first turn. But here we actually have a pretty darn good hand, if I do say so. We have ourselves an Eevee. We have a Fomantis. We have another Eevee. So we have the Grass Energy. We can get out Leafeon right away, and then next turn we can just use Grand Bloom and, uh, you know, start getting set up. 
And here looks like we're going to get some sort of Crab Brawler deck that's interesting. Um, so probably going to be using the Crabominable from Burning Shadows, I believe it is. Which actually is a little bit tanky. It has 140 hit points and it's weak to Psychic, I believe. So we're going to need two Fomantis, or I'm sorry, two Lorantis in play if we're going to be able to take these things out in one hit. So, okay, so we have an Ultra Ball. We can, hmm. What do we want to get rid of here? I think I actually might just save the Ultra Ball. Uh, just in case there's nothing else we really, really need this turn. Uh, just because we have Grand Bloom at our disposal for next turn. So we can always just, uh, you know, save it for then. Since we can evolve immediately enemies. So your opponent's going to get down a Brooklet Hill. Seems good. So uh, might search out another Crabrawler. But here it looks like they're going for a Remoraid. So they're playing Octillery. Makes some sense. Let's see what else they're going to be playing in this deck, though. So I'm assuming we're going to see some strong energy, some choice bands. You know, trying to hit us for probably, I think it's, what, 110 with Crab Brawler or something like that? So let's see what we can get here. Yeah, here I'm just going to use Brookwood Hill just to search my deck, just to see what all we have access to. So I don't see anything too crazy prized. I think I saw uh, a Grass Energy or something, but other than that, nothing too bad. So we do, uh, we have a Floatstone, might get it down on Lorantis, maybe? I mean, it's also good on Leapion just in case we want to have a good Guzma target, so... Not sure, but here comes Sycamore. Gonna get ourselves a Fomantis, just because that is gonna be an important part of this matchup, I think, like I said. Here, I'm just gonna get down the Floatstone, and we're gonna end. Even though we're putting that Lorantis pack in our deck, we can just get it back out with a Grand Bloom. So here... This hand is not that good, unfortunately, but we do have Pow Pad, so we can actually get some supporters back into our deck, increase our odds of hitting a draw supporter. So we can grab Sycamore, I think that's fine, and uh, end seems okay, I guess, as well. So Cynthia seems fine, too. I don't think it matters too much either way on those. We still have some other ends left in our deck, too. So here, can use Field Blower, can get rid of that uh, Brookwood Hill, try to prevent our opponent from setting up. A little bit and here normally I wouldn't actually want three EDs in play but um, I'm thinking about benching it just because we could potentially use Grand Bloom to evolve everything but also another thing we could do is we could attach the double car synergy and just take a knockout here that is also a possibility as well so normally you don't want to with like the, the Grand Bloom, but what I'm thinking is if we take a knockout on this Crab Rawr and they get Carbominal next turn, we're not going to have a way to actually knock that out. So I think it's safer to do Grand Bloom. Uh, you know, this way we can get both Lorantis in play because, like I said, we do need both of them to knock out a uh, Carbominal and also getting all these evolutions in play will thin our deck out a little bit and maybe make it so we can draw into a draw supporter uh, here soon. But luckily, we can. You know, take a couple hits and I think survive for a little bit with this Leafeon, uh, thanks to its ability. But let's see what our opponent is going to do to respond uh, this turn. So they're going to get down another Crabrawler. Looks like they didn't even need that uh, Brooklyn Hill that I got rid of there. But here they're going to Ultra Ball. So I would imagine either a Crabomitable or maybe a Lele to grab a Supporter or something. Either of those. Or even Octillery that could be good as well. Here they're going to get rid of Acerola. I did not see the other card. Okay, so they're going to grab that Octillery. That's going to allow them to use that Abyssal Hand ability, draw until they have five cards in hand. And they have a Lele as well, okay. So let's see what they're going to opt for. They're going to go for a Cynthia. And they're just going to play the Cynthia, choosing not to use Abyssal Hand just yet, okay. So they got their Crabominable, so definitely uh, our opponent's having a good little start now. They can use Abyssal Hand, get a few cards. You're going to go for an Ultra Ball, probably getting out another Crabominable. That seems okay to me. And here we're just going to see a Gutsy Hammer. Okay, so that's actually not too bad. Okay, we actually have... Hmm. Got some options here. So definitely going to use Breath of Leaves, heal 50, and we draw a Guzman. That's actually pretty important here. So one thing we could potentially do is... Hmm. So we're definitely going to play Guzma and try to take a knockout, I think, this turn. Because the reason I actually kind of want to put... Well, actually, no, we could just take a knockout on the active. But if our opponent has, what, like, Choice Band, uh, Strong Energy, that'd be, what, 130? 
Uh, I mean, we're probably not in danger of being knocked out, but if we play the Goose Note, we can actually get two prizes here. So I think I like this. You know, normally I don't like taking cheap prizes on things like Lele's until maybe the end of the game, but our hand is kind of dead. So honestly, we just need to dig and get some more cards to work with. I think it's going to be the biggest thing. Uh, Octillery, I think, would have also been a good play as well. That would have potentially cut off their draw support uh, since they did play their hand down low. But unfortunately, like I said, I uh, did not have a draw support ready to go for next turn. But here, luckily, we hit the end. Uh, the, you know, it's something. We're only going to have four cards off of it. But hey, it's a, it's definitely a help. So like I said, I wish we had a draw support. Otherwise, I think just knocking out Octillery or their active would have been a better play. But like I said, we're just desperate to get those extra cards uh, you know, off the prizes. So here we see what our opponent is going to get out. They have that Regirock EX down the bench. It's also kind of a pain that's going to increase their damage output by 10. So between the Strong Energy, the Choice Band, and the Regirock, they're going to be hitting for, I believe it's 140 with their Crabominables. So they're going to refill their hand with Octillery. And just retreat into Crabominable and use that Gutsy Hammer uh, attack to do 140. Okay, so here I can attach a Grass Energy to the Benched Leafeon. And here I'm actually going to play Energy Lotto, I think. I uh, actually don't need anything off of it, but I just want to thin it out of the deck because we're not going to get that many cards off then. I just don't want to see it again. Okay, and here we actually got a kind of okay hand. We have Sycamore ready to go for next turn. So I'm going to use uh, Breath of Leaves, heal 50. And unfortunately, I think we still get knocked out by another Crabominable. But you know what? We're just going to do what we can to, uh, you know, maximizes our, our chances of doing well here. Like I said, healing the 50, even though it probably doesn't really make much of a difference here. Just trying to think, do we bench the Eevee? Um, because this Leafeon's probably going to go down, but no, I don't think we do, just because we don't have any more Leafeons anyway, so I think we just go for the Solar Beam here, taking a knockout. You know, this Leafeon is going to go down, but this Leafeon will have taken three prizes, and we're only giving up two, so it is, you know, it's gone the distance, it's kind of had its use usefulness, and, uh, you know, we're still going to be up in the prize trade at the end of all this. So they're going to get down Brooklyn Hill. Okay, just searching their deck, not getting anything. So I guess nothing else they really want. And just going to retreat into the Krabomino. We'll use that Gutsy Hammer attack to finish knocking out Leafeon GX. So kind of unfortunate we did lose a Leafeon there. But like I said, we netted three prizes off of it. So I think we did just fine. But here, we luckily, we top decked the Double Carver Synergy. Definitely a good top deck to get. And here we can just... um. I said, just going to Brookwood Hill just to take a peek. And then we're just going to Sycamore this hand away. Like I said, we don't really need the Eevee at this point. But here we do get another Fermantis. That could be good. Especially if we have to ever pivot into a Lorantis GX at some point as well. And here we're just going to do 150. Taking a knockout. And our opponent only has one more Crabominable left. So, uh, you know, they need to get another one set up. Otherwise, they are going to be in a bad spot. And they need to end us as well because, oh man... They have Enhanced Hammer. That's actually really problematic because we had the Guzma ready to go on the Regirock for the next turn to, to finish taking a knockout to win the game. Uh, because Regirock is actually weak to grass, which means we can knock them out just immediately in one hit, even without our Lorantis in play. So, uh, a little bit unfortunate there. Definitely a good move on our opponent's part. That means we are going to have to dig to hit an Enhanced, or not Enhanced here, but a uh, Double Carlos Energy. Instead of being able to just Guzma and win the game, but here they're going to Guzma up our Lorantis, which is also problematic because now we can't actually knock out a Crabominal. So definitely a really good turn from our opponent here. And yeah, I guess we have to promote. Uh, so we've lost two double card synergies so far, but you know what? We don't have that many cards left in deck. I think we can get it. So yeah, let's do it. Let's just promote Leafeon. Actually, if we can just Sycamore here, we can probably dig and hit what we need. Um, so let's see. Just taking a peek at what is left in our deck with that Brooklyn Hill. So we do have two DCs. We do have a Sycamore in there as well. So we can just lay away for Sycamore and try to dig and hit what we need here. So here we can get the Choice Band. Um, I guess we can put it on the bench Leafeon. That seems okay to me. But here, let's at least feel lower getting rid of the Floatstone and the Brooklyn Hill. You know, at the very least, taking away some options from our opponent. Just taking a peek, seeing what all we've used at this point. So let's go for the Lele. 
I think that's the play. Yeah, we go for layaway and we just sycamore this hand away. It sucks to get rid of, you know, a escape rope and a Guzma. Luckily, we still have one Guzma left in deck. And we don't have any more float stones, which is also a bit problematic. So we definitely need to hit double car with synergy here to take that knockout. And um, yeah, so I guess we put the choice ban on the benched one just in case. Or I don't even know. So I guess it's not too important just because we took a knockout either way. But here we hit the uh, rescue stretcher and the double car with synergy, which are both really important. So here we have the Lorenth, so we can just get back. And actually what I probably should have done is put uh, three Pokemon in the deck with a Rescue Stretcher and just Ultra Ball. But here we can still Ultra Ball, thinning out these cards from the deck, um, grabbing another Fomantis. And like I said, we can always pivot into a uh, Lorenthus GX at some point if we have to as well. But I don't know, do we even bench it? I'm, I'm going to say no, just because we want to leave that bench spot open for a Lele, potentially if we get End or something like that. So we're going to take a knockout on this Kerbomitable. And our opponent needs something big here. I really don't know what they could get that would prevent us from winning at this point. Um, so we'll just have to see what they're going to get down. They get down the Crab Brawler, get down the Strong Energy, and we're just going to see an Abyssal Hand here. And we're going to see an N. Okay. That is fine with me, though. Like I said, I feel like we're in a good spot. Um, if they can't retreat this Octillery, we just win that way as well. But here we see the victory screen. Our opponent's going to concede, so Leafeon Lorantz is going to take uh, the first match of this video, but let's get into another one and try this deck out again. And here we see a Dragon deck box and a Mega Rayquaza coin, so I'm curious what we're going against. Maybe uh, this could be Dialga GX, could be the new Garchomp as well, assuming we are going at something from Ultra Prism. And yet again, we have a pretty solid hand. We have Eevee to start with, which is great. We have Grass Energy. Uh, we have Lele, so we can grab Bridget. So definitely we're going to have a great turn one, assuming we don't get end. So moment of truth, let's see what our opponent is playing here. And we're going to see a Gibble. Cool, so we will at least be able to try this out against uh, another Ultra Prism deck. And this is actually kind of a rematch. If you guys did see, we posted Leafeon uh, Decidui versus Garchomp a couple weeks ago on the channel. So uh, we're trying this out again, see if uh, see how this Leafeon version can do against Garchomp. So if you guys haven't seen that video, I'll have a link uh, to that one as well. So definitely check that one out that one out if you have not yet already. Here we're just going to bridge it, taking a peek with all we have access to in the deck. Looks like we do have two Lorantis prize, which is a little bit annoying, but luckily we only need two in play to actually take a knockout on Garchomps. So we're going to do bridge it, definitely grabbing two uh, Lorantis, I'm sorry, Fomantis and another Eevee. So yeah, that seems pretty good to me. Uh, Lorantis GX also could potentially be a decent attacker here. So actually I might do that. So I kind of like that. Uh, Lorantis GX can actually take a knockout on uh, things like Gibbles and stuff like that too. Uh, once we get out one of the regular promo Lorantis as well. So you're gonna do the energy evolution. So we're gonna get Leafeon GX into play. Alright, and another reason I want uh, Lorantis GX as opposed to another Leafeon is because it has 210 hit points. And it doesn't seem like much, but that will force our opponent to have a choice band to take a knockout on Lorantis GX at some point if they need to. So your opponent's going to play a Tapu Lele of their own. I would imagine we're going to see a Bridget from them. Okay, so we are going to see Bridget makes some sense to me. Okay, so let's see what they're going to get out. Uh, probably, I would imagine, maybe... Uh, two Gibbles and yep, and a Rio. That seems pretty good. If they ran a low in Vulpix, I could have also seen that be a target, but they might not even run that in their list. But here they're just going to retreat into Lele, which I am fine with. That's going to kind of, uh, you know, strand them in the active spot for at least a turn. Since these Garchomp decks typically don't run a high amount of retreating cards from what I've seen so far. So we're going to Ultra Ball. Let's get rid of the Eevee and the other Ultra Ball. So what I might do here is. We can grab, maybe just get Lorantis GX, I think that'd be okay. Or actually, no, let's go for the other Eevee, because what we can do is we can Ultra Ball the one Eevee, and that's actually fine because we run four anyways. So we basically were able to get rid of our extra one that was in the deck. And okay, this is actually a pretty good hand. So what we can do is attach this Grass Energy to start powering up a Lorantis GX, kind of spread our energy around a little bit. Since we only need one more attachment on this Leafeon to take a knockout anyways, it's fine attaching somewhere else because we can just attach next turn, uh, you know, and, and be able to attack as well. 
So we're going to use that Grand Bloom GX, getting our two Lorantis in play. Also going to be able to get Lorantis GX and another Letheon GX. So unfortunately, our hand doesn't have much going for it for next turn as far as draw supporters. So being able to play that Energy Lodo like we played and also you know, playing all these evolutions out the deck will increase our odds of drawing into like a draw supporter for the next turn as well. So let's see what our opponent is going to do here. Uh, like I said, they have that Lele in the active spot, so we could see an energy drive, but here they are going to get down another fighting energy on their Gibble. Uh, kind of the smart thing to do, I think Garchomp is, you know, it's a decent attacker, but its biggest downside is needing two energy attachments. And here they actually played Cynthia, which is actually good for us because that means that they won't be able to get down a DCE since they already played a fighting energy. So we are pretty safe from getting a uh, getting knocked out by a Garchomp this turn, which is actually pretty big. So here they're going to get out a Gabite, it looks like. So starting to get some evolutions into play here. And just a pass, so not the most eventful turn from our opponent, but I am cool with that. So let's see what we can do here. We can attach this, um, this DC, or we could attack with Lorantis GX. That's also an option. Or we could, because we're doing 140 right now with this Aletheon. So there's a couple things that we could do. We could do 140 this turn and then retreat next turn into Lorantis. But what I might try to do here actually is uh, to basically set up all of our attackers are just one energy away from their uh, main attack. We can do Flower Supply and right now Lorantis and Leafeon both are just one attachment away from using either of their attacks. So I think it's just safe for spreading our energy out a little bit. Also if our opponent does get a Garchomp DCE, this is going to force them to have a Float Stone and Choice Band as well. So uh, I think this Lorantis is a little bit safer than this Leafeon anyways. So we're going to see an Ultra Ball from our opponent. Looks like getting rid of a Rare Candy. So uh, looks like we're going to go for a Lucario. Okay. So they must have a Garchomp in hand if they are getting rid of the rare candy like that. Oh, here we're just going to see a Cynthia, okay? So let's see. What does our opponent have? I'd imagine we'll probably see a Garchomp this turn. They, they had the Gabite last turn. Um, okay, so the, we are going to see an Ultra Ball. Getting rid of another rare candy and a Field Blower. So both cards I am happy to see hit the discard pile. They've already gone through two rare candies. So that definitely bodes well for us. Okay, so we're going to see yet another rare candy. So three rare candies down, and they only have one Garchomp in play. So maybe in the late game, uh, our opponent might struggle a little bit here since they have gone through uh, some pretty good resources. But, you know, sometimes these Garchomp decks do play Puzzle of Time. So if our opponent does play Puzzle of Time, that could allow them to fish resources back out of their deck. And here we're just going to see a pass. So yet again, we managed to stay safe. So we do have a Pow Pad. Uh, we could shuffle in and but unfortunately we would have to shuffle in Bridget as well. So if that's the case, I think I'd rather just hold the pow pad. I really don't want Bridget's going back into the deck. So what we can do here is we can attach this DCE and use Solar Blade, taking a knockout on Tapu Lele. So now our opponent needs Choice Band, DCE. They do have Lucario in play, so it is liable to happen. You know, it, there definitely is potential for something like that to happen to us. Uh, if they just get one of those pieces of the puzzle, and they still need Cynthia as well, so that's important to note, because Garchomp does 100 plus 100 more if they played Cynthia as their supporter for turn. So they need all three of those cards, and they will be able to take a knockout on this Lorantis. And they've not actually yet played a Choice Band, so um, we'll have to see, you know, if they can manage to find one here. Okay, so they are going to get a Gibble Down. They're going to use that Precognitive Aura ability on Lucario. So they're going to get at least one of the pieces that they need in order to make this knockout happen. Okay, so let's see what they got off of that ability that they used with Lucario. So I also forgot to mention Lucario's ability. It lets you search your deck for any card if you have Garchomp in play. But here they have a super boost energy, so that's interesting. Um, that might be a little bit of a misplay, though, because it only provides one rainbow energy. It only provides... Uh, you know, four of any kind if you have three stage twos in play. So here our opponent just has to do quick dive and I am ecstatic about this. So maybe they had some double Carlos energies prized or something like that, but this is going to be huge. That's going to allow us to take out their only real attacker here. And getting rid of that super boost energy is also pretty good as well. So here we can get the DCE down on Leafeon. That seems okay to me. 
And even though we haven't had a supporter to really draw through our deck or anything, we've been in kind of a fine spot. We've been able to survive with the board that we have. So we're going to take out a knockout on this Garchomp, doing 160 thanks to those two Lorantis that we have in play. And we draw a Guzma, so that's definitely a good card, especially if her opponent can't find a double Karma Synergy in Choice Band to attack us and they have to retreat or something like that. So let's see, our opponent's going to use that Precognitive Aura ability, so we might see them grab another Lucario, and then we might be able to see that Lucario grab what they actually need, because that'll set them up to be able to use two Precognitive Auras, or Precognitive Auras, uh, you know, throughout the rest of this game. So let's see what they're going to grab here. And we're going to see a double card Actually, I think a little bit of a misplay. Like I said, going for the second Lucario would have been a little bit better because that would have thinned out a Lucario from your deck and that Lucario could have grabbed the double card Synergy. energy. So do they have Choice Band? That's going to be the other big card they need. So Counter Catcher, okay. And they're going to do Royal Blaze just for 100 damage. And so what we can do, we can actually just pay to retreat. So we can... Attach double card synergy, we can heal 50 with Breath of the Leaves, uh, you know, healing down to 100 damage. And then we can just retreat uh, back into our Lorantis. And, ooh, actually, we could do Leafeon and heal some more from our other Leafeon. And, wait, what? <laughs> so it's not letting us use the ability. Oh. Oh, I just realized. Yeah, we, we discard the energy to retreat. We can only use Breath of the Leaves on Pokemon that have energy, so. Okay, slight little misplay there, but nevertheless, we're in a decent spot here. Our opponent doesn't have any energy in play, so this Leafeon is going to be safe because it's going to take them two turns to power up another uh, Garchomp. Since they already use Super Boost Energy, you know, we're not in any real danger of seeing that come down. Here, we're just going to see an end from our opponent. Not too worried about it. Uh, I don't really know what else we really need. We can kind of tank hits with this Leafeon. And here, we just see the victory screen. I guess our opponent didn't have much else to work with, so Leafeon Lorantis is going to take both these games pretty convincingly here uh, but yeah guys i hope you enjoyed this look at leafeon lorantis uh there's like i said earlier in the videos there's a ton of different decks that we could potentially do with leafeon so i'm really excited to try out this card even more and also too if you guys want to see our updated leafeon decidui list our stage two patrons actually have access to that over at patreon.com slash rare candy tcg so if you want to learn how to access that amongst other perks i will have a link below in the description but as usual, guys, feel free to like and subscribe. And if you can support this channel by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg or by picking up something from our online store at rarecandytcg.com, it would be greatly appreciated. But with that, I appreciate you watching and we'll see you for the next one.